Coming up, we're going to be talking about the history of Nickelodeon and why we love it so much in this episode of Diz Pop. Diz Pop is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel, experts at helping you plan the perfect vacation. Visit them on the web at dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. Well, hello, everybody. I am your host, Rhino Clavin, joined by my angry beaver, Craig Williams. Oh, hoy, hoy. So in this episode, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the history of the channel of Nickelodeon and what it kind of, it means to us, memories involved with it, but, um, you know, a little bit of, like, how it kind of formed into the entity it is today, because eventually, in the next subsequent episodes i would like to talk about the original animated shows and what they were all about and what they meant to us and the live action shows like are you afraid of the dark Mm. and then maybe the game shows after that too well consider me excited because one i love this topic and two i've never heard anyone pronounce subsequent as subsequent (laughs) well well you know me well, let's get started. I feel like Nickelodeon's heyday was in the 90s. I don't want to say heyday because it's not like a failing thing. But like it's it's like grasp on pop culture began in the in exactly. the yeah. late 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 80s to mid 90s. Yeah, w- without the without the revolutionary children's television programming in the 90s, uh it wouldn't still be the staple that it is today in my opinion. Granted, you know, Nick is uh it wasn't just uh, every night being all about the cartoons. You know, at, at night they did have Nick at Night. Spooky programming. Well, I, well, I like Nick at Night. <laughs> <That's yeah>. after. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, I know it did have spooky programming, uh, and I'm sure we'll talk about that on an episode at some point. But then, you know, crossing over into uh, breaching, uh, bringing in the adults with Nick at Night as well, too. It was just, it was the perfect channel for such a long period of time. So, and, yeah, so well, sad it will, that it's lost its way. For me, it's not that it's lost its way. It's just like anything, it expanded so much that it branches off. And you miss kind of the day where you could get everything in the in the one place. You know what I mean? It was the super target of of networks. You yeah. could just get whatever you needed there. Um, it, it, for me, when I was a kid growing up, we didn't have cable, but my grandparents did. So when I slept over my grandparents, it was like I got to watch Nickelodeon. Yeah. And one of those things is that when we would lay out the, the mattress in my grandparents' room, we – we would watch Nick at Night. And so it was like I got to watch Dick Van Dyke. I got to watch um, uh, Get Smart was always one of my right. favorites, you know. And and that, you know, that reminds me of my childhood. And then if you slept over on a Saturday night, you got to watch uh, the SNCC. The, uh, the SNCC programming block. Yes, the two-hour programming block that began there. Do you have a fond uh, Nickelodeon memory? You should go to the White Shot so I can see my Rock with Modern Life t-shirt. Oh, there it is. Uh, um, but I'm just curious. Like, you know, that it, yeah. Nickelodeon in the 90s reminds me kind of of that. Like, it reminds me of uh, when I was when I was younger, and my mother's a single mother, that we were always dropped off after school at my grandparents' house. So, like, stuff that was on cable like Nickelodeon, like Rock with yeah. Modern Life or things like that. These were, like treats to me but they also now are wrapped up in that that fondness of my grandparents house in elementary school you know what i mean yeah no um i I think mine is a little bit more uh just a a little bit more ingrained because it is something that i grew up heavily with uh, on the disney afternoon um show that we did you know i talked about my fondness of being really young and watching ducktales uh chip and dale's rescue ranger all that um and that was like that was me when I was young, like going, you know, going into elementary school and such. But then w- once I hit that age range, um, you know, early, early, you know, uh, first grade, second grade, uh, that that elementary range, that's when Nickelodeon took a lot of extra viewing time. And a lot of that was thanks to uh, the summer, summer program. Yeah, box, exactly. Where yeah. Um, it like, you know, snick snickly. Stick Stickly, stick sorry. Stickly. <laughs> sorry, we have all... a new character. Yeah, Stick Stickly. <laughs> it was like that's we're the drag. Keep... Stick Stickly. We keep saying that Snick. It's and well, they, Nick, that was their whole thing. All... Was the 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 remember the uh, was it Teen Nick? It was like the yeah, N was the one. Teen Nick. Yeah. But it's, it now it's spelled correctly. It's Teen. 
Nick. Yeah. Whereas before it was Teen Nick. But yeah, you know, um, going back to that though, Stick Stickly, that was that was summertime. It's you know, I still sing the jingle. We off all my know head. the zip code to New York. Because right to of me, that thing. Stick Stickly, PO Box nine six three, New York City, New, New York, York State one zero one zero eight. <laughs> so yeah, it's funny. It, it's yeah, no, it, it's something that like that was it, and then voting on the blocks and being like, okay, well, you always knew, you know. Growing up watching Rugrats, Doug. Um, Did you just say voting on the blocks? Yes, they had they had the voting on the block of programming that you would watch. They had a way. I, I don't remember if it was early internet or if it was dial in, but you could vote on which show. Oh yeah, would I kind of remember this. I would, remember that. Yeah. yeah, and so that's where no you, one would never let me use the phone. I think it was the phone. I think you had to call. Yeah, yeah. and that's where you would like get like really hopeful like okay i hope that salute your shorts goes up against something really easy so that way anytime you kablam that. won i was just like god someone yeah. let me dial in <laughs> <laughs> exactly and so like that was that was a lot of summertime viewing for me and you know like i i just mentioned i watched you know at, at night watching rugrats doug uh hey arnold all of that um uh, can i ask uh, what real monsters. year you were born I was born in the ripe old year of 1987. Okay, that's what I thought. I thought it was just a two-year difference because yeah. I was 85. But I, I asked this not to be like, oh, well, if you're not in the 80s, you can't. I don't care about that stuff. I think it's just that, like, even with our two-year separate, like, there was this, um, I don't want to use the word renaissance, but there was this, like, there was a lot happening in the mid-90s that affected us growing up that, that if you are younger than us, you probably went right under it. Yeah. Like in, and that had to do with like uh, this uh, – I'll talk about it in a little bit. Um, there was a uh, – I forget what it's called, but like a, a, a mandate or like a restriction on, that, that occurred in the mid-90s on children's television. Yeah. And so um, Nickelodeon – Educational. Educational thing, yeah. Nickelodeon was free of this because it was not broadcast through the air. Yeah. So it, it's kind of one of those – it's just a weird series of events that, like, we saw, I feel like, Saturday cartoons at their best. And then it kind of – that idea of the way – of programming, like, when we were kids. Like, when we were kids, we could come home after school and there was a block of programming on TV. And I don't think that exists really anymore. Yeah. I mean, uh, I Not in the but same I way. even have to stop you one step before that. You say we saw it at the best – um, the other nostalgic thing that I, I have a deep love and appreciation for, and we're talking about a little bit of it um, on a Universal episode, um, Hanna-Barbera and watching uh, yeah. Yogi, Bear, Yogi Bear, the Flintstones, yeah. Jetsons. That that was also uh, That was Scooby the creation. Yeah. yeah. And so there, there are... There are many different types of perfection, but Nickelodeon was one of them. But uh, yeah, um, you're right, Hanna Barbera for sure. The, yeah. yeah, that's just something you can't. You the, know, but can't you're question. absolutely right with that that change, um, with that very thin line of separation. Um, you know, my wife is a '90s baby, my born wife. in 1990. My wife, <laughs> um, she is she's born in 1990, and so like when we'll watch uh, the Splat. Sometimes, you know, when we can stay up late enough to watch it. Uh, that's, <laughs> Isn't that a weird thing to say nowadays? <laughs> it really is. But if you don't know what the splat is, it shows all the classic uh, early Nick shows uh, on Teen Nick after 10 o'clock every night. And so when, when we watch it, we'll watch Rugrats. And if it's a classic episode, I am so excited. But if what's, if it's one that happened after the Rugrats movie and Dill is in it, She's like, oh, yes, the good ones. And I'm like, no. 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 She no. does not say the she good ones when Dill. Dill is in it. Yeah, she does. I mean, I don't hate Dill, but it's just kind of like. I do. The best episodes are the early ones. Yeah, like, the, the first three seasons. Is she just, does she just think that, um, oh, my gosh, what is Angelica's doll's name? Susie. S no. Is it? No, Susie, Susie, no, no, Susie, no, Susie Carmichael, the that's the neighbor, yeah, yeah sorry. Um, Cynthia. Cynthia, yeah. Is she just like, there's the episode where Cynthia gets messed up, and yeah. then Cynthia is messed up the rest of the series. Oh, my gosh, that breaks my heart. Well, um, I do, I, I, so before we go too much further here, I, um, which is crazy. So nowadays, on, on Nickelodeon has multiple channels. Yes. It's, you've got Nickelodeon, if you've got whatever extended cable that's i don't know where how it exists anymore but you know it, there was uh there's teen nick like you said yeah. and then there's the noggin or right. is this still called the noggin or is it um, just the end now no it, i think it's the end if it's even still on tv 
It was it was the one with the N was in the hand when when I yeah. So I'm, I'm when I refer to it as the noggin, I'm referring to like 2004, 2005, through like 2007. It's where Degrassi, where I learned about Degrassi. It's essentially where I, where I got that from. But this like when I was a kid, I always felt like Nickelodeon felt like it was new, like it was different. Um, I don't know, but. So we we looked it up. We looked up some history that I do want to share here, <laughs> um, but um, I didn't know this till I looked this up either. That Nickelodeon is part of MTV, like it is owned by this. It's MTV Network Kids and Family Group, which which you were saying, and it said too in the thing I was reading is that uh, it's a Viacom. Yeah, which makes sense because that's Paramount, right? It's, it's via Viacom is the main product behind all of it and then um it breaks off into mtv and nickelodeon and paramount and all the different um i mean you would have heard it on the channels growing up as a viacom it was always a deep deep voice announcing that it was a viacom thing so yeah no it, it's in this great little family of um of other programming that has just changed completely throughout the years uh, oh yeah absolutely um so it, it actually originally started as a thing called pinwheel um in columbus ohio uh back in december of 1977 mm-hmm. i i'm i was surprised and that that was a thing until um 1979 when it was rebranded in april of that year as nickelodeon um and it became the first all children's network as part of warner cable system in buffalo new york now i thought you were going to start with the history of what a nickelodeon is oh see i should have went back even further what where does the nickelodeon name come from craig well it comes from the silent film era (laughs) there it is yeah (laughs) at the old nickelodeon um yeah, um, so um, Nickelodeon itself, I, the company, I believe, considers the year of inception as 1979. I don't think it refers to itself before that, even though this, the, the the Wikipedia refers to it before that because, like, so whatever. That's fine. Nickelodeon itself says it was, was founded in 1979, um, and it originally started as a commercial-free programming as well, which I thought was pretty interesting, um, and it only aired for, like, 12 hours a day. So yeah. this is a thing, like, I don't know if you kind of have memories of this, but I do. Like, when you were a kid, do you remember watching TV and the channel would just stop? Like, it, it would end for the night? And, like, the flag would come on or something. Like, yeah. Not the flag. That's, like, no. the 50s. But yeah, you're thinking, it would just be an image. You're thinking Doc Brown, Howdy Doody going off into yeah. the... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> think of that. Um, I mean, a lo- sometimes, yeah, I remember going to color bars and, and off programming for the night. But I feel like, and I could be wrong, but infomercials really picked up steam in the early 90s. So yeah. that's when... And, I mean, you still have that to this day. Like, I hate that uh, a channel that I love, like FX... That how do they not? Oh, they have on so like many great Sunday shows they or could something just, like that, or yeah. like yeah, you pick that up on the wrong time, and you're like, how is it three hours about a, a, a freaking gym, a exactly. home gym? <laughs> so it's just, but um, this is this was part of that whole deal. This was like the inception of cable at the fairly early on in cable's history yeah. too, because cable's not even that old, but or it is is not old in the relative scheme of television, I yes. mean. But, yeah. Um, so anyway, it would do 12 hours a day, 11 hours on the weekend, and then um, various other channels would take over the programming that, you know, from then until, from like 8 p.m. until like 6 a.m. or something yeah. like that. Um, and then, um, so um, anyway, the, uh, the, I thought this, this was fun, but the signature green slime that has come, you know, GAC, that mm-hmm. that they, you know, they slime you at the Nickelodeon, the Kids' Choice Awards, and um, everyone knows what GAC is, uh, came from the Canadian sketch comedy show, which was one on their programming. Uh, you can't do that on television. Do you yeah. remember that? Um, I don't remember the show. It was before my time, but it, it, I've I've read a lot about it. It had, like, it. it I... I I didn't see it often, but like I remember the sounds of it because it had a very distinct opening that had this like siren that would go off, and it had a still. And I know Alanis Morissette was on it and stuff. Um, and I I remember there'd be like a word you couldn't say in a scene, like a secret word, yeah. and the person would try and get the other person to say it, and then if they did, they got slimed and stuff like that. Um, I I didn't know that wasn't a Nickelodeon original show that started, and then when Nickelodeon became a thing, that's it made its American debut through Nickelodeon. Um, 
And that was the, the channel's first hit show. So uh, if you jump forward to 1984, the channel's not doing very well. They fire all the management people. Um, they wipe them out, and they bring in some MTV people, and they work on a channel ID, which is like creating, um, you know, the essentially branding. Yeah. You know, the the little, like, you just did stick stick lease yeah. thing. It's that. And so this is where the classic Nickelodeon splat came from. You know, the orange splatter with the Nickelodeon writing over it in white. Um, and then they used that logo for like 25 years, up until 2009. I guess they don't really use that anymore. But They um, use it on the splat? Well, I would hope so, since that <laughs> is the splat. But... Um, but uh, the the that's that's when um, yeah. Nickelodeon's all very bubble letter now. Yeah, I guess text. it's all it's three dimensional, kind of like the yeah. wrap around, which is ironic since that's what it looked like before the orange splat. So I don't know. Um, but you know, when we were kids too, like Gak was a big thing. That was like I remember going to see like you could get it in every different color. It sometimes would have things in it. There was Floam. Do you remember that clear oh, yeah. thing too? There was like a clear one that wasn't Gak, but it like. It yeah. might have been Gak. Well, they like... even did um, they did scented Gak. So I remember mm. the one that like ended Gak for me was a pizza smelling Gak, oh, and it's like I still have nightmares of that. I, <laughs> like, I, I just I remember like only, my mom hated it because it would always essentially like end up in a laundry basket somehow, and I just remember like one night coming home and it was like her, her friend from Germany, all these you know all these her friends have come from overseas to see her and. What they the first night they're doing is picking Gak out of clothes nice, in a laundry nice. basket. You know, I was a good child. Um, but so in 1984, um, when the MTV guys came over too, this is also when the commercial free era ended, and they brought up like traditional advertising. So you know, commercials during yeah. the shows, and then um, July 1st, 1985 is when Nickelodeon became a 24 hour channel with the launch of Nick at Night. Mm-hmm. And this was 8 p.m. to 6 a.m. And this is what Craig was talking about earlier, where they took like, I, I guess the idea came from like old radio shows, um, where they wanted like the best of all time stuff. So that's where they got like, you know, the Dick Van Dyke show. Um, I love Lucy. Yeah, uh, um, get smart, just... like we said. Yeah, all all that kind of stuff, you know. Um, which I am so happy Nick at Night existed because I don't know that I ever would have seen any of this stuff if it yeah, weren't for that. That's where my fondness for these shows like just really got solidified uh bewitched i dream of oh, genie God, Bewitch, yeah. um they would sometime it kind of went on and off but the monkeys uh I yeah i remember that watch yeah. them uh bob newhart literally like uh, taxi um which at the time i guess when i would have been watching that when that was on you know taxi wasn't that old of a show but that's also the weird progression that nick and knight took then like i remember watching cheers on Nick at Night and being like, yeah, it's nice watching Cheers again, and then realizing like, oh, it's only been off the air for twenty years. That's Does it not make really... you feel weird. Like Friends is a part of a I, Nick at Night, and that's too, why and like, I hate Ugh. Nick at Night now. Like, that it's like Friends. Um, it's they, stuff that you're like, I've seen this. The George I want the Lopez show. Yeah. They still show that, and and you can't even go. You know, eventually they did. That was the problem with Nick at Night that it was all just you know is becoming too current. So then throw it back to those old shows with TV Land. Yeah, I was going to say, TV that's where they split Land TV is Land. All brand I new think programming. Friends is, well, TV Land has like the Betty White TV show on it now, too. That one she was hot in Cleveland. Yeah. You know, and you're like, oh, original programming. Okay, interesting. So now, like, my whole, my whole TV, like, enjoyment <laughs> is if I wake up by, like, you know, 630, I can turn on I Love Lucy from um, 7 to 8, and then Golden Girls comes on from 8 to 9. And yes, I realize that I watch the uh, programming of either a really old lady or a really gay a man. Really gay man. But, <laughs> no offense. But it's, it's like literally... That's what I grew up seeing on Nick at Night. Well, so it's like it's just ingrained. It gives you like a... It's weird. And this is why Nickelodeon is so successful, is they did that what any product what any advertising or business will aim to do is create emotional impacts in people and they succeeded because like not only is it a show that you love it's just it's not on any network it's on a nickelodeon it's on a tv land yeah. it's on nick at night you know what i mean nick at night feels like a warm blanket before you go into bed because that's what we were doing when we were kids yeah. being wrapped up in warm blankets by people we love having shows they loved you know um, and, and when I met Dick Van Dyke at T23, all I could think about was th- th- sitting on that mattress in front of that TV, watching the show with this man and, like, my grandparents, you know? And so, it, you know, it, I think we're very lucky in that sense that we... Oh, yeah. I don't think 
programming exists or is I feel like drifting away from that a little more? Yeah, no, because it is it's kind of changing in such a Netflix, um, Hulu, choose what you want to watch when you want to watch it, uh, binge style. Uh, a lot of this programming just kind of goes, uh, kind of just goes by the wayside. Like you know, yeah, Dick Van Dyke, you can watch uh, beautiful episodes of it on Netflix. You can again go in, like Cheers is all on Netflix. A lot of these classic shows are out there. But they're not being presented on a plate in front of you like they were when we were growing up. Yeah. yeah. It, now you just have, which I, I love Friends and Seinfeld. But when that's like the only two shows that they still syndicate from that early time, uh, the early 90s, it's like it, you're missing out on so much. The fact that kids might not know what Third Rock from the Sun is. Oh, that kills me. Kills me because I love that John Lithgow. You know I do. Um, JGL. I know it's just it French Stewart <laughs> just just that you might so the the weird thing too about television in this era too is like a show would have been on from like 1988 to like 1991 and it might not have become successful until 1993 yeah. it's one of those like this is where television took on an afterlife you know and this is where I think this is where syndication even became like the more of a mega hit it was becoming you know what I mean and um so I, I, you know, I think Nick at Night is one of those things where, like, I, I don't know. I'm glad that it existed for for our own. Oh sake, yeah, you know, no, so. and I, I'm glad it still exists in the state that it is in. Granted, it's the shows that like were on while we were already in early teens and throughout that period. So it's not, it's not like it's stuff we don't want to watch because it is stuff I still like watching and I enjoy watching. But I feel like those shows are far more accessible in other places. Right, right. And, and and I think now that we're older, we develop a more of an appreciation for history, you know? Yeah. And so, like, it is almost like, I want to see that stuff now and appreciate. Yeah, like, I, if it weren't for Nick at Night and TV Land, stuff like that, I wouldn't have watched Beverly Hillbillies. I wouldn't have watched oh, Green yeah, Acres. Yeah. Yep. Stuff that, like... Green Acres all the time, yeah. Yeah, um, even going to my mom, if she's watching this, Petticoat Junction, all these great <laughs> shows that just kind of got forgotten the they monsters. fall through the cracks yeah they slip through and, and the monsters is a great one the adams family yeah. any of those like kind of yeah. weird random shows that you're like it, 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 it's hard everyone's looking for that icon and i, I worry you know I, I think about this this is i know we're getting off on a little bit of a tangent but it wor it worries me a little bit because one of my favorite um plays we ever did in school was bye bye birdie which takes place yeah. in the 50s and i worry like even when we did it, and this was 2004 because I had just graduated and I came back to help with it, um, it I didn't understand some of the references, and I think, and I was, and this was the thing that I didn't get is that I, I was like, in 10 years, like, are my cousins understanding this references because they're they're under, you know what I mean? Like the youngest one's now a senior in high school, like he's not going to understand any of those yeah. 50s references anymore, and like so, like it's weird how culture slips away from you. You know, it does. I mean, well, that, yeah, that is going off in this extreme tangent. And then because there's there's kind of the the opposite side of it of um, you understand what they were going for, but in not in terms of like references, but you understand tonally what they're going for and how they butchered it. Because I just watched West Side Story um, over the holiday weekend. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, July 4th, Tuesday. So I celebrated all the way through Sunday and. West Side My, Stories, your July Fourth. Is yeah, well, it? America. Okay, you know, okay. It's, yeah, it, coming to okay to be in America. Uh, yeah, um, and you just forget how offensive it was. Natalie Wood portraying a Puerto Rican, like <laughs> it is just so absurdly offensive. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, that is true. That is true. So, but yeah, it is true. Yeah. It, but but anyway, that, yeah, that, that's a, times change and references. References get lost. And some of the weird things they did back then just don't translate to this era. And it's it's sad, but it's life. Yeah, it's true. Well, so that that's that was uh, 85. Nick at Night showed up here. And then in 88, it saw the launch of the Nickelodeon's Kids' Choice Awards, which I did not know were that old. I didn't either. Because um, I, I don't even remember these until like mid-late 90s, whatever. But... Um, you know, those still, those are still a big deal. Um, and then um, it also saw the introduction of the educational program, uh, programming block for preschool age kids, Nick mm. Jr., which to me, 
I'm sure it was great for some people, but it was always like the second that big orange circle came on with the little blue circle, which was the dot and junior. I was like, oh, oh no, 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 no. You shut up. Eureka's Castle. Was that part of Nick Jr.? That was part I of Nick I thought that was Jr. part of regular. No, no, no. Oh, see, I, I should have pulled that up in my thing. It's not listed in my live action TV shows. Oh, that, uh, Eureka's Castle was in there. Um, uh, that's always the big one. That what's, everyone... the, what's the elephant? Don't you remember him? That's Bar- Babar. 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 But that was PBS, I want to say. Oh, I thought that was Nickelodeon. Now, I want to mm-hmm. say that was Babar was PBS. He might have been on there. Gullah Gullah like... Island? Is that from Nickelodeon? Mm. Under the Umbrella Tree? And there's a there's like a like, they're like little creatures that live with a family. Well, they did that have David Channel. the Gnome. Um, that was another big one on Nick Jr. Uh, I, I watched a lot of Nick Jr. and like like Nickelodeon. Um, I, I feel like I feel like. Nickelodeon, everyone watched it way past their appropriate age range for it. Like, yeah, I, I watched a lot of Nickelodeon, and every now and then I'll still turn it on and I'll watch an episode of SpongeBob. I don't have shame. Um, but you, you watch it far longer than you should. I watched Nick Jr. way longer than I probably should have. Um, and uh, I think the cutoff for me was when Blue's Clues became like the staple of nick jr yeah um i'm looking at this too a lot of the shows that were incorporated later were a lot more like there's a kung fu panda and I, i'm like okay well nick nick jr when i was a kid was like very soft quiet sounding shows because it was for preschool it was for people who for naps you know but it was Rick's also Castle educational was like you said no i liked rl stein bro he worked on that. That's what I'm saying. I I, I liked Eureka's Castle. I completely forgot about that. Wait, but... Jack Black is R.L. Stein or R.L. Stein? Well, we'll never really know. Um, so uh, that was 1988, and that kind of brings us up to the 90s. So in 1990, Nickelodeon Studios was opened, and it was a hybrid television production slash attraction at our very own Universal Studios Florida. Did you ever get to visit this? Uh, no, no, no. As I've said before, um, I did not get introduced to Universal until 2011. So I, I was one of those people who watched at home, seen this episode was filmed live at Universal Studios Florida, and saw, saw that iconic outside building with the weird colors and shapes and the staircase going up. Oh, yeah. Being like, I want to go there. When you waited in line for this, you waited outside, and there was a giant gack, like a f- uh, yeah. geyser. And, oh, yeah. Oh, my. I'll be honest. My mom would give us the disposable camera. All my photos are of that geyser. There's like 50 photos of it. I mean, we, we came to Disney World, Walt Disney World, in that period. So I probably was like not even aware that all you had to do was drive 10 minutes down the road oh, yeah. and it could be right there. And that's that's kind of the sad part. I can't blame my parents for my upbringing, but to know that I was so close now and never got to see it, it it is kind of like heart-wrenching. It was it was it it was like for me the highlight of my it was just so cool to watch all the gack pour out of it. And yeah. it was all that's all it was all about was gack. Like who cares? Okay, uh, it was it was um like You'd go in and they'd show you how they make different types of gak, and then they'd let you eat some of it. Um, there was an edible gak part. I remember. I think oh, I remember. God, yeah. I hope she actually it was edible, and I'm not remembering this incorrectly. And I, I mean, ate it. It's like silly putty. Me. Everyone can eat it, even if you're not <laughs> supposed to. But it was really cool. They used to do like the game shows in here. I remember that. Um, and they were all be like, oh, "We're filming an episode," and yeah. I don't know that they were ever actually filming an episode, but it was still a lot of fun. Um. So, uh, and then um, that uh, August 11th, 1991, saw the debut of its first original animated series, multiple ones, which were Doug, Rugrats, and the Ren and Stimpy show under its Nicktoons banner. Um, three show, the, uh, These shows were successful, these three, and so that led to the additional Rocco's Modern Life, which came in 1993. Yeah. So this is interesting. I didn't know that Doug, Rugrats, and Ren and Stimpy were all the same age. I thought... I had this feeling that Ren and Stimpy was on way before those for some reason. I knew that they were all similar. I didn't know they debuted all at the same time. I thought it was kind of staggered, very similarly to um, very similar to, to Div- Disney Afternoon. But uh, you know, it's I, I mean, animation style. All three are so incredibly different. 
yeah. that it also that's that's part of it. I think um you know, in my in my mindset, I would think that it came Ren and Stimpy first, then Rugrats, then Doug, because I think the style kind of although Rugrats was definitely the roughest of the styles of Well, all Rugrats three. was borderline like pencil still. You know what I mean? It had that pencil and the color kind of swayed a little bit. It was like a little yeah. like early Simpsons. Yeah, you know? it, it it looked it looked better than Doug. I think Ren and Stimpy looked better than both of them, but it was like in my mind, I always made up the story that Ren and Stimpy was like the first, but it was just a little bit too raunchy, so they had to go back to the right. Boards. I always thought it was the first because the adults liked it so yeah. much, and I was like, well, they must have seen it before, you know. And and that was the thing is that Ren and Stimpy got away with a lot of sexual adult stuff. Oh, on it. Ren and Stimpy is a it was a very dirty show. Um, I can't remember if they took it off Hulu again. They go back and forth where Viacom pulls stuff off of Hulu. Oh, really? But um, you know, I the one when it was on either Netflix or Hulu for a while, I went through every episode twice in a row. And um, as raunchy as it is, and as much as they got away with stuff, just an absolute amazing show. So it, they would balance these moments of like beautiful animation with just pure grotesqueness um like moments where you just want to like close-ups on their butts with hair yeah. and everything like and, it was but it was like beautifully drawn yeah stuff. No, and you'd want to throw up and then they also um because of music and licensing um they used a lot of classical music as the background to the show so like you would you would just hear all this, these classic these classic pieces, classical pieces, and be like, it's juxtaposed up against then these disgusting imagery. And it, it was just something to see. It was so, so incredibly amazing. It's something I didn't appreciate when I was a kid. But, you know, looking back on it, while it wasn't my favorite show then, I, if I had the option to watch any Nicktoon show right away, I, w- I would choose Run and Stimpy. That'd be my one go-to. Interesting. Okay. Well, w- we'll we'll dive a little deeper. Like, what's the premise of that in a in a second uh-huh. here? Just a brief thing for those of you who might not be familiar. But um, so that did well. August fifteenth, nineteen ninety two, the network launched the primetime block SNCC. That's when they expanded their their range of programming even further. So that would be um, eight to ten p.m. on Saturdays. I remember that. I remember when that. Well, I don't remember it in 1992, but I remember when I'd sleep on my grandparents, like I said, and that was the, are you afraid of the dark? Oh, like, uh, every, are you afraid yeah. of the dark? All of that. Yeah. This is where a lot of the staples came to be. Yeah. Um, and then 1994, we got our next Nick Tomb, which was Ah, Real Monsters. Um, and then uh, that brings us up to 1997, which was a pretty good year for Nickelodeon because, like I said earlier, that's when the educational television mandate began um, on all broadcast stations in 1996. And so that um, Nickelodeon didn't have to comply with that as it didn't broadcast over the air. And so in 1997, their Saturday morning lineup and everything, was, like it rocketed past every single network. So they went from like really low to like whoosh, like right through the ceiling so uh, laser sound um it uh released its first feature film in 1996 which was that would be the you know this one rugrats movie oh right. my god Craig. what is it no it's harriet the spy oh Jeez. i completely for- michelle Don't... trachtenberg i completely yeah completely rosie o'donnell yeah. whoopi goldberg yeah. in that movie yeah. i just completely yeah. forgot about that yeah um, I remember when it, when it came out, it was an orange cassette, and I yeah. remember that being a big deal. It came in the orange clamshell, and I was like, I've only ever seen black ones before. Yeah, no, no, I completely remember it now. Um, but yeah, so that was a really big success and led to the, the Rugrats, Rugrats movie, movie, which, which 1998. Isn't that crazy? I can't – I it felt like that was not – as far away yeah. as that was. Like, no, they but. and they it kept going after there. I don't know if you're going to keep going with it, but they did like Snow Day. They did um, Rugrats go to Paris. Well, the movie, the the Rugrats movie, that first one earned over a hundred million dollars, and it became the first non Disney animated movie um, to ever do that. I re- I remember seeing it in theaters, and that's kind of going back to what we said earlier with Dill. That's where I knew like. Nope, I'm done with Rugrats. Yeah. My cousins, my cousins, like, they were young, 98. Yeah, he was young, young, young. My oldest cousin. And it was, uh, I remember sitting, like, watching it at his house with him, and I was like, 
this is not like Rugrats. Why is Tommy so angry in the woods at this baby? Exactly. Like, and uh, that so Rugrats is a weird series too because when we get to that, it had a weird like three year gap in it because it like it was one of those shows that wasn't successful until the reruns really, yeah. um, or it was successful, but you know. It, it everything was delayed steam. more yeah. yeah no it picked up more steam went to all grown up all that crap um and so that then led us later down the road to spongebob in mm-hmm. 1999 which became the most popular nicktoon in the channel's history and still remains one of the highest uh rated shows on their network to this day isn't that insane to this day 18 years later i, I understand I mean, i'm not gonna say but... power rangers is still on the air it's been 25 years so <laughs> yeah on I, nickelodeon i i understand that i understand spongebob because i loved it for like those first two years but then yeah well so i I went back to the originals and i went i'm only going up to 1999 so it was we had doug rugrats ren and stimpy rocco's modern life ah real monsters hey arnold um kablam the angry beavers cat dog oh yeah cartoons the wild thornberries and then rocket power so it's weird like i i was gonna say like Hey Arnold was where I felt like I was getting older and I was like, oh, maybe I don't like this as much. But I really remember, like, I remember the Angry Beavers and I remember Cat Dog Dog and a little bit of Wild Thornberries, but that could be because of my, like, younger sisters liked them. It it became selective for me. So while I enjoyed Angry Beavers and I would suffer, but then, like, I enjoyed Angry Beavers, I would suffer through, uh, I would suffer through Cat Dog and Wild Thornberries. Um, and then, uh, rocket power was probably the last thing that I was like really attached on, but that oh, was, oh, you also... like watched it. I remember what it is, but I didn't. Oh like yeah. It. I, I did watch it, but that was because I was, you know, I was doing extreme sports. I was snowboarding, uh, biking, stuff like that. So I don't know. That show You're just like 12 kind... years old, little snowboarder that, that show just appealed to me. Well, okay, so that that brings us up to 2000. Now, the reason why I'm going to stop at 2000 with Rocket Power, uh, which I believe was actually 1999. Um, I may be incorrect. Uh, Yeah, it started in 1999. So the reason why I'm going to stop there is because I wanted to do this little episode that was about the history because I want to now, in future episodes, I want to talk about what our favorite we're going to Talk about like what they meant to us, what we were really into them. I want to say they're ranking, but I don't feel like we can rank them yeah. necessarily. But we're going to do an episode dedicated to the original animated shows. Mm-hmm. We're going to do an episode dedicated to the original live action shows. Oh, yeah. And then we're going to do game shows because we can't not talk about Legends of the Hidden Temple and all that stuff in there. Yep. So, yeah. So this we just wanted to have a little bit of a history here. I thought it would be fun to just talk about Nickelodeon and kind of like what it meant to us in the – in the 90s and yeah. so it was a fun chat i didn't mean to like cut you off or cut it here but oh, no, it was no, no, no. It, i didn't realize how long we've been yeah. talking so. yeah no and i already i already blew blew up the whole ren and stimpy scene so when we get to the animated one you're gonna know what uh what well, i love and that's the thing too is originally i was just gonna we were just gonna list them in this episode and talk about it but now i'm like i want to look up and research Ren and Stimpy a little bit more. And, like, Doug's got that interesting history because it started at Nickelodeon, but if you remember, it went to ABC because it was yeah. part of their thing, and then they made Doug's first movie. Mm, and we've forgotten about Doug's first movie very quickly. Yes, we have. Because it's terrible. Is it? I don't know. I never saw oh, it. It was an awful movie. They also released all these, like, books, children's books that went along with it, too. So they it's, ruined Doug. They they basically killed Doug. Uh well, we'll talk about that when we get yeah. to the animated episode. Um, so that'll be that'll be fun. But um, yeah, so if you don't like Nickelodeon, I apologize that now there are going to be four episodes of Dispop about Nickelodeon. I'd like to tell you they're not going to be in a row, but I will be traveling out of the country uh, for two weeks and D23 coming up. Or uh, when we recorded this, it was coming up. But it – yeah, sorry. So <laughs> I thought it would just be fun to do some nostalgia stuff, and um, especially what with uh, – and we'll go into this a little bit more – is that there's going to be um, revival. There's a, a yeah. revival of Rugrats, I believe, in the works. There's a Rocco's Modern Life movie um, for – when I say movie, it's like made for Nickelodeon movie, not like a movie theater movie. But I'm still very excited about that. Yeah, I think it's important to note that um, Nickelodeon, if not the biggest competitor, one of the biggest competitors of the Disney Channel – in the 90s and all that. So they 
you know, they were both doing children's programming and each one of them had an effect on each other. Throw that into the universal kind of versus what was happening over at Walt Disney World and yeah. Disneyland mix. There was a lot happening there between these kind of uh, rival children's programming blocks. So uh, while while it is about the darker side of things, as some of the people out there like to call it, it still is like uh, decisions were made about where Disney would go with its programming and the style of choices they made based on what was happening at Nickelodeon. So it really is like you can't really focus on how Disney progressed through the 90s without acknowledging that Nickelodeon did have a big effect on it. Yeah, absolutely, 100%. Um, and it's just, it's just, it's a different, it's a different style, a different take on it. You know what I mean? I, I, I felt like in the beginning, Nickelodeon was almost a little more mature than yeah. Disney was. Disney aimed for a lot younger, and I think Nickelodeon just kind of let kids be kids a little bit more. Um, I, th- I, and I'll say it right now, we'll get more in the live action. I think Nickelodeon's live action programming through the 90s really allowed disney then to try to perfect it then when they got into the 2000s i don't know if they did perfect it um but they definitely had some pretty massive hits with stuff like lizzie mcguire and and even stevens and then all the way through hannah montana yeah that's true so that's true uh wizards of lavery place was a big one too i said that really weird but whatever it's that that focus on taking children Kind of going all the way back then to the Mickey Mouse Club, picking out children and making them huge stars. Yeah, well, we'll get to that when we talk about Amanda yeah. Bynes and Keenan and Kel and everything. Well, Keenan, not the Kel, but you know. Um, but yeah, uh, mystery men. Yes, yeah. Um, which is that? Isn't that a Paramount film? Maybe, maybe yeah. not. Who knows? I might be making that up, but. Um, yeah, so I thought that was just a fun like little history of the channel, the programming that we kind of grew up with and how it kind of affected us. I mean, I know I spoke heavily of the animated stuff, and that's just because we're going to lead into that with the animated stuff next. And then, like I said, go into the live action stuff, which is like Pete and Pete, Hey Dude, Clarissa Explains It All, Salute Your Shorts, you know, stuff like that. Um, Craig's favorite, Space Cases, and um, uh, Animorph stuff, you know, game shows, Double Dare, What Would You Do? I'm gonna have to do a little research on the uh, on the game show ones though, because there are a lot more game shows than I remember on this mm-hmm. channel. Um, Wild and Crazy Kids, all that stuff. Uh, it's if we were more resourceful, I would say we should we should have done like created ourselves an obstacle course and done it put with the balloons, and you have to find it. Absolutely not. We could have got a big nose, rented nope. a big nose, got to get the thing. In. Nope. Um, but yeah, so. Um, I guess we'll, we'll just cut it here, you know. Um, so I just want to say thank you, everybody, for um, for listening. And hopefully you enjoyed this uh, trip down memory lane with us. Thank you, Craig, for chatting about Nickelodeon with me here. And, um, Obliged. Yeah, so tune in next time for our episode that's going to be all about the um, animated original series from Nickelodeon in the 90s in the next episode of Diz Pop.